So babe, we've just got back from three weeks sailing the Greek seas. Fantastic time. Um, purpose of this video is what? We're just going to give a general summary. Uh, anyone who wants to go sailing in Greece, particularly the Northern Ionian. Uh, particularly the novices. <laughs> so we just want to give you more information uh, so you can be more prepared than we were. Some of the stuff that we didn't know that we wish someone had told us before we went. That's right. Maybe we should have done more research on YouTube before we left. Mm, we're at Greece. We're on a boat. I'm up in the roof. First night on our charter yacht, we escaped Lefkada, 5 p.m. Plenty of light. We sailed for an hour and a half down to Nissos Meganissi, and we tucked in here at Ormos Kapali. Quite a nice area to free anchor. Okay, the first thing for all of you novices is to get a copy of what book, babe? The Greek Waters Pilot. Now this book. Great source of knowledge, but with respect to the author, Rod Heichel, not set out the best. So you have to really study it, work out. It tends to start from one end of the ocean and go to the other and all the islands in between. So it's not very user friendly, but when you get into it, give it the thumbs up. One of the great things about the uh, catamaran is the amount of freeboard room you've got. You know, all this room up on the roof for kids to climb. You've got all this room down at the, uh, the front part of the boat. And of course, where I'm standing, there's my shadow. And of course, there's my lovely wife, Cheryl. Uh, almost Kapali. Almost Kapali. We made it. We've anchored, and there's only two other yachts. When we turned up, there were four other yachts and two left. We must have scared them off with my anchoring technique. Pretty scary. 60 bucks. Ripped off. And now that we'll stay on forever. So babe, um, in Australia, in some places, six metre tides. Uh, what's your findings about tides in Greece? You, you would not even realise they had tides. Very insignificant. You don't have to watch the tides at all. Whereas in Queensland, Australia, or anywhere around Australia, you got to have tide times on you all the time. And the implication of that when you're anchoring is you don't really need to care too much about tide fall. You just anchor where it's a good place to anchor. And what do you do then? And the water's deep as well. What do we do then? Reverse anchor. Oh, set your reason. anchor. Yes, set your anchor. <laughs> set your anchor and then someone... Someone has to has swim. Has to jump in with the rope loosely tied around the neck. <laughs> well done Mike, I'll just zoom in on him. Blurry. Another fantastic after anchoring job done by superhero Mike, super sailor Mike. To the shore and then find a tree or a rock. Preferably a rock. Preferably Trees can a rock. uproot. Yep, and tie on. Tie on both ways like that. Why do you do that though? So you don't swing because no swinging you sailors no swinging you'll have a neighbors you'll have neighbors that oh not that sort of swinging you're talking about the boat doing yes it. that's right sorry we have just spent the last three hours going in and out of anchorages trying to find a nice spot to drop our anchor i tell you what very deep water and very steep drop-offs with very little beaches around here lots of rock so a little bit scarier to what I've been used to in sunny sandy Queensland. Port Athene you can tie up at the jetty or you can free anchor down the middle here. On this side yachts were dropping their anchor and running aft lines out to shore. There's our boat anchored in the harbour. Sirius is in the cloud Sirius. So babe, we went sailing in September. Mental blank because I'm back on land. 
the whole when, month so, of September, yeah. Okay. Tell us about the weather in the Northern Ionian. Very predictable. Um, but Bloody it, hot. Hot, still. Humid. Not a lot of sailing happening. The wind blows in the afternoon. In the afternoon. 2 p.m. the wind blows. The wind's picked up and it's changed direction. Instead of from the northwest, it's now coming from the southwest. So where we were for lunch, the anchorage got really, really rocky. So we've turned around and we've gone back to Port Leone where we know we're going to be safe tonight. But it can be like easterly in the morning and then by the it'll swing around to the northwest by the evening. So you always plan to anchor sheltering from the northwest at night time. Well, after a day of motoring here and motoring there, we've ended up back at Port Leone, which is not a bad place to be. Port Leone on the island of Calamos, one of our favorite islands and anchorages. There's enough room to free anchor, but most yachts drop their anchor and two tie two aft lines, which we learnt to do after about a week of sailing in the Ionian. Because even though it can be whatever, even though it can be blowing from the south southeast, sure enough, night come, night time comes and it swings around to the northwest. You can guess she's the sailor, I'm the cook, <laughs> and anchor line swimmer, and anchor wench, anchor anchor wench. You know, uh, I've been wondering why uh, it's so hazy in the distance and I did a bit of research on Google and it's to do with the very high incidence of eucalyptus trees here in uh, Greece and just like in Australia in the Blue Mountains when the heat's up uh, the eucalypts give off vapour and uh, that causes this, this misty look that you see. But uh, lots of spectacular uh, scenery. Currently, uh, we are in 133 metres of water, so what's that? Roughly 500 feet. I'd feel perfectly safe in going, jumping off the edge of the boat uh, and going for a swim. Of course, that is if the boat's not moving. So, babe, uh, in Australia, we're used to all sorts of weather apps, bomb and all of these sorts of things. You call up the Coast Guard and get a weather report. What's your experience here? Black, calm, beautiful blue water. Well, we asked a few more experienced sailors out there and discovered that we had to get on a website called weather.com, was it? Something like that. Oh, and what's the problem Windows. with internet coverage on the Ionian Sea? Very sketchy. Very sketchy. And don't bother trying to call the Coast Guard because the bastards can't speak English. And the weather or changes. Or we can't speak <laughs> Greek. Go figure. So you can't get a damn weather forecast. But as Cheryl said, you know, the weather's pretty stable. But it's nice to know whether you're going to be able to go for a sail tomorrow. Or not. Got 33 metres of chain out. Um, what a magnificent little uh, place to be. Uh, you know, that whole little community nestled in the hills and the olive groves. Fort Where are we again? Somewhere in Greece. Port Agamothi or something? Port Calamos. Port Calamos. Port Calamos. Port Calamos. Now, this thing isn't charted on the maps as an anchorage, so it's important the first thing we do is we spend a little time here, make sure that this uh, heap of plastic doesn't drift. It's beautiful in here. What do you think, sweetie? Look at the scenery. Yeah, it's good. We're going to have lunch. What's the best time of the day to get into a marina if you want to get a berth without too much hassle? 11 a.m. You know what? People in Greece, as the sun has almost set and there's the last bit of light, they decide, oh, we're going to go find an anchorage. 
and of course then they anchor somewhere which is totally inappropriate in the middle of the night you hear the anchor chain go up and then you hear panic noises and you see torches and flashlights going off in the middle of the night get in early get the best spot get yourself a nice lunch stock up do your do your washing have a nice early tea have some some red wine you know some saganaki There's a misconception that, uh, you know, the Mediterranean is fished out. Um, what's your experience? We saw plenty of fish. We didn't actually go fishing ourselves, but we saw... Why? Because we were under the misconception there weren't many fish. And we didn't come prepared. But, but we once... saw mahi-mahi getting caught off the jetty. Off a guy with a hand line catching mahi-mahi that were seriously <laughs> a metre long. Well, off a jetty bit of an with a hand line catching mahi mahi. There's plenty of fish. Um, don't go over with the misconception that the place is fished out. There is a huge amount of fish. And life when you there. jump in the water to go for a swim, you see fish. Yeah. Except for sharks. No sharks. No Only jellyfish. one shark killing in the history of Greece. Now, those of you that are students of the world know that Greece was founded how long ago, Bo? I don't know. I'm not a student of the world. 3,000 years ago. One shark killing. There's nothing, Beat that, Australia. Nothing dangerous in the water. We're so used to having all these dangers in our water in Australia. But Apart from sea urchins. Oh, sea urchins. Don't stand on a sea urchin. Very painful. Here's a quick boat tour. Down the stairs on the starboard side of the aft, we've got Sienna's bedroom. Sienna and Mummy's bedroom. And if we spin around to the forward, to the bow of the boat, we've got another bedroom, Mike's bedroom, bathroom on the starboard side, shower, mirror, me, hi, toilet, electric pump toilet, into holding tanks. Looking back up at the saloon area, it's quite a nice big large space on this lagoon. You can see the nav table up here, which we're using as a tech table and I'm using as an editing table. Down on the port side, port bow, there's a double bunk, which we're not using. Spinning around, aft double bunk, our luggage, and we've got a bathroom on this side as well. Same as the other side, mirror image, shower, toilet, although we've been showering on the deck. Galley, here's my galley. Back deck. Plenty of room. Anchor in a port uh, like Savota or Frickes or um, Keone Bay, but what are you going to have to be used to? You're going to have to be used to squashed in right next to your neighbour because they're Li living at close, close quarters. So, have a look how many uh, large yachts are anchored here uh, in a relatively small bay. And what tends to happen is people drop their anchors too soon. You've got to drop your anchor to, to set it so you then reverse up and you hook up at the stern. Um, we've just been watching a comedy of errors where um, a monohull has dragged this cat right off uh, its existing anchorage and now he's trying to re anchor. And if you um, are tied up to a jetty or the side of a breakwater and you've got three metres, some bastard is going to try and squeeze in and will squeeze in and will scrape the side of your boat. So fenders, be, out. fenders out, be prepared. We're on autopilot. That's the island we are going to. Motoring. Hey babe, what's the depth? 100 
140. 140, eh? How close we are. And look at that. We are 500 metres off the bay and we're in 140 metres of water. Can't believe there's another boat coming in. And our anchor is directly under Zephyrus, right beside us there. That's where our anchor is. I can't believe how many boats are squashed into this tiny little anchorage. You would never see this in Australia. Right, well, babe, um, one of the things that's often overlooked when people go overseas is camera and technology. Um, what sort of stuff would you recommend people yachting to capture their memories want to take? Well, the drone was amazing. <laughs> we got some incredible footage with the drone. We could have probably used it a lot more than we did, but we were scared of splash. So we could have... Practice using a drone before you go. Next point. GoPro. Make sure it works before you go because we had problems and trying to resolve a GoPro problem on a chat line with GoPro when you're in the middle of nowhere, very hard. So GoPro, three. Good sound and a good, good tripod. Sound. Rode microphone, we recommend that. With a with good cat tail, With the cat tail over it. Dead cat tail. Dead cat tail, 40 bucks, really worth it. Um, uh, don't be afraid to use your iPhone, fantastic. We're shooting this on the iPhone now. Um, and last but not least, mini digital SLR. Oh yeah. Mini digital SLR with good sound. With good sound. Of course, that you use your microphone that you got for your iPhone, which we're shooting on now, for that. Babe, um, sailing the Ionian Sea in one word, how would you describe it? Awesome. I was expecting more than one word. <laughs> you said one word. <laughs> we had a fantastic time. It's a beautiful part of the world. Um, just so much to see, to do, the history of the place. You know, you'll stumble along on all old relics you'll meet interesting people you'll see things you'll go swimming in in gin colored water or gin colorless water um, and the weather just amazing um, the food you know i lost three kilos sailing and i was i was bloody eating like a horse because the mediterranean diet is so healthy so get your ass on a boat and get over to greece Greece <laughs> and the Ionian Sea. <laughs> what a beach!